Top agenda. Um, agenda item 2.0. Could I please have the attendance? Mrs. Durgan? Here. Ms. Casalonis? Here. Ms. Perry? Ms. Starr? Here. Okay. Ms. Starr? Here. Mr. Hinton? Here. Ms. Caldwell? Here. Agenda item 3.0 workshop. I hand that over to Monique Culbertson and Kathy Terrell. Thank you so much. Good evening, everyone. Hi there. Hello. Hello. I'm very excited about giving you this opportunity to experience our improvement process and get a little sneak peek at our MEA data as well. Our outcomes for tonight are quite simple. We have about an hour here. Uh, the main outcome is to gain an understanding of our improvement process. You will notice this swoosh. Uh, it is not related to anything uh, Nike, but it's more like a bit of a fiddlehead. And we'll be walking through steps one, two, three tonight with you a little bit, giving you some experience with some live data. The other outcome is to begin to analyze some of our MEA data. I do need to make the note that this is preliminary data subject to change. It has not been released publicly. You are only going to view a certain piece of the data. We're only going to be looking at um, Scarborough data and our Scarborough students compared to last year's performance from two different views. So our agenda tonight is we're going to talk about the connection to our improvement process. We're going to give you a little bit of an overview of the main assessment system, uh, engage you in an actual activity where you'll have opportunity to work together as a group, digging into the data, and then we'll talk briefly about our connections to our Comprehensive Needs Assessment and ESSA, Every Student Succeeds Act. So our improvement process is based on what's called data-wise. There is, of course, a text, but there was also an institute in which Scarborough um, folks went to experience last summer, I believe it was. January. Uh, January. January. Yeah. Sorry, I missed a season or two. <laughs> uh, in January, and they came back and they developed an action plan for the district in order to help the district learn how to go through this improvement process. We also are using balanced assessment systems and actually in the next couple of days, next week I believe, on Tuesday, the Leadership Council will be engaged in an activity where we're looking at all of our assessments, we've done a data inventory, to see if our system is really balanced, if it's really working for us. And in terms of the MEA data specifically, you will note in this chart, we've been through a number of different state assessments over time, and this year is the first time we have three years of data which is really pretty exciting because we can now start talking about trends. That said, this is also in literacy the first year in which the writing has been included in the scores and we have a series of DOE workshops we'll be attending to learn more about that in relation to the scores. Uh, but we're able to start really looking at trends which will give us some more information, look at some other data sets to help make some decisions in and around the assessments. Uh, the next piece of that, which is, should be the next this slide. Let's try this. Hmm. We seem to be frozen, which is pretty amazing. I'm moving quicker than the slides. That usually isn't the case. <laughs> You're catching up with my ability to run the computer. <laughs> Wait, can you try to press escape? Yeah, let's try. Oh, there oh I've Same been way. signed out. Or Kelly, have you been signed out? Probably. It's our security system. We want to make sure the right people are at <laughs> the podium here. It is. It's <laughs> very secure. <laughs> That's what's happened to me all day. Oh, it's it getting set up too early. All day. It times out. Where it Does it really? Mm -hmm. laptop, so I wonder if it's something. There's something going on. Because it was. Could, it's it's funny how that it just happens. Like, it's kind of real. It's very real. Like, it'll be like, like I'll be literally working on my computer and all of a sudden it will do that. I'll be like, Okay, it seems I've developed a good relationship with this computer now. Uh, this slide I'm not going to go over in detail. Um, once the results are made public, um, I will typically take this presentation and place it on the website so people can access it. This is basically this testing schedule for this coming year. 
pretty much the same time of year with the assessments. We're not expecting any shifts. Uh, typically in about December or January, I attend a DOE meeting and they give us all the updates for the coming year. Uh, what I'd like to do right now is turn it over to Kathy, who will give you an orientation to the activity tonight. Thank you. <coughs> so one of the first steps in the improvement process is to organize for collaborative work. And one of the key tasks is to establish your norms. So if you could um, just take a look at the norm tents on your table um, and take a look at the norms. So and we are using these norms throughout the district for a lot of our work. <laughs> the ACE Habits of Mind, they are how the work is done. So it's the shared commitment to action and then taking a look and assessing how things are going and making adjustments as you need. It's intentional collaboration which you're seeing tonight, and it is this relentless focus on evidence, making your decisions based on the evidence. Um, the norm start and end on time, that one I had to really adhere to. I was rather over a bit ambitious when I put this presentation together and I added up the time, and it was about an hour and a half, so I cut a few things out. You're not gonna get to see a couple of the great videos I had chosen. <laughs> Um, let's push it along. So the second step is building assessment literacy. And this is interesting because Monique and I looked at the feedback from last year's data dive. And one of the things that we found in the feedback was we would have liked a little more time to just look at our make and make sense of the data charts we were looking at before we started the activity. So what we're going to do right now is an activity where you're just going to look at your data charts and we'll pass those out. I'll let you do that, Monique. So when you look at the data charts, it's almost helpful to cover up the actual data. You're just looking to answer these questions. Take a look. What content area was assessed? Who is being assessed? What are your groups? What does the scale look like? And how many were assessed? So you can work in your group and just make sense of the charts. So the strategy is to kind of question one. We cover up in the middle part. Right? 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 Yeah. Yeah. What content area was assessed? Was assessed. The science one. Because <laughs> science is called the media science, <laughs> right? Yeah. Yeah. These are yeah. yeah. empower me. Okay, but they're all considered under the umbrella. All are clean. Yeah. 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 Good okay. question. That is. Really it is. This is looking yeah. well, well, at great and great eleven. What is all the right? Like the same right? And we call like that's like those are exactly the kinds of questions that we're talking about. Literally. They should just be all of them yes, 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 familiar with right. so that we understand okay, like, so what, is, what, is, what, is, what it said, so what is it actually now this year's five kids, right? But they didn't take the assessment yet. Yeah. 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 So these kids are and so, right? Yeah, well, yeah, everybody moves to the What? What? Comparing. So, which means that first one is, right? But then we have a whole bunch of And so, so. It, this is like this little packet is going to show us like from third grade through eighth grade, grade <laughs> like every yellow. year yeah. because Good. that so Empower Me test is, is, is given out every single year, right? Like that's the, the name that they give the today. Um, about or above um, and and for three high three school and statewide. So all of one, so all of them are all and choppers. Well below. So what if we look at the those children with special needs? We can go to the next page. What do I need to see? No, then. Yep. So, so, there's so on this page, grade three, all third graders don't know we were in the grade five. I understand Correct. that. So, no, it's three different years. Right. Okay. So, so, it's three different years. Right. Third graders are different set of third graders. Mm -hmm. okay. so, so, it depends so on the So, that's very low for me. So, that is the group they have an alternate year. It looks like they're the other group. It's being assessed against how many children over time. So, it's well below. The expectations below. 
and or says how many students are being a state explanation. I see the percentages, but I don't see like the wrong scale is what you just said. Well, below. Yes, we can say like we know that there's like you know, between 200 right. and so some of the things we might notice right. because yeah. those are percentages those are percentages. Uh, that these current categories so really and they were the third grade. Right. What percentage is actually lower? Yeah. 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 So well, well, this doesn't get it. So why are the percentages going up here? Third grade students. Right. And so that raises a good question. Almost at the bottom. Yeah, the middle the game. What was the participation rate? Because right. this is the because scale. Because well, so it must have, have been around 20%. And you have 95 is what makes them is, is the proficiency. This is the number of students. So, so, right. No, this is the percentage. Right. right. Percentage right. of students. Either up or down. So right. how many were in like this band? So I'm guessing that the top band exceeds the standard. Right. So 43% of students. And third grade, that we've your graduation standard. So we have to so so like mm -hmm. guys are getting younger, and younger and younger groups of well, kids. No. How, How many, many were assessed? assessed? So what are we actually tracking? Okay, so <laughs> that's yeah. Yeah. We don't know. Question. Like, I can tell we you. We don't know. We've it seen does. our raw data. Okay. So we need to see like, for the reports that we get. Let's make a bar model. This does not have a number that we can agree how they're fine. It's only the kids who take them power. So we can see. So this is when we're looking at the data. And I'm subject area for all of these charts. So, so we still don't know. No. But you know it's not to cross it's not every single thing. So what are the what are the circumstances by which somebody would take a penalty? Someone with a disability. But we also still want to see how they do when they have someone who even though it's eight is expecting that you're someone who's out so But don't they have makeup? If you're out for six, like if you're out, you're out that full week, and then, and then uh, you come back and you're feeling overwhelmed with your classwork, and then you're going to be and you're going to be so rare. These are the current 11th grade. And so that would be this. Yep. Uh, no. So we can't answer the current 10th grade. No, we do. We just it's just right. All the yeah. All the like, kids. Kids. Yeah. It's like we have to answer with the graduating years. But it's not on the last page because it doesn't they're coming right. right. So yeah. these kids, some of us at 2020, they're 11 this year. Yes. Kristen, she's in here. And so these kids, even though they weren't tested, the last time they were tested was 8th grade, they're current. Right now, so. Is this 100% of the right. garbage yeah. or yeah. Is this a date? This is 100% of the kids that took this test. Took this test. Yeah. In Scarborough. In Scarborough. Yep. We can't okay. look at state yeah. until it's yeah. Okay, well, I'm just, yeah. So 43% of Scarborough students. Of Scarborough students. Every that took the test. Every 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 Standard assessment. Yep. Okay, so let's now move on to um, the next step. And I just want to talk a little bit about we're still in this building assessment literacy. When we look at this data, we're going to start with noticings. What are the facts? 3% fewer students were above state expectation as fifth graders compared to fourth grade. When we look at wonderings, that's when we start to make the inferences. And I wonder if low performing students moved into fifth grade that year. What we're going to do now is we're going to, I'm just giving you a little preview of, we're going to spend about 15 to 20 minutes just capturing noticings. Then we'll move to 15 to 20 minutes of capturing wonderings. So your task is to look at the data overview and list on your group's document three to five things you notice, and you're just going to record facts. Then each group will present one of their noticings. And this is now moving into step three, where you create the data overview. 
and that's a, there are many key tasks, and one of the key tasks is to, to create the overview, which Monique and I did, and that's usually your data managers who will do that. And then you just, you really want to analyze, and remember this is just one data source. Mm -hmm. And so we're just really looking at the big picture of our data at this point. So, I noticed that the year of 2026 cohort from grade 3 to grade 4, 70% oh, more, 70% of, of the third of the fourth grade students were meeting or exceeding And then here are one I like to look at it the way that you're looking at it, to sort of having it be like, yeah, having that be sort of like the, yeah, but look at the difference, like, these guys, third, fourth, and fifth graders, mm -hmm. they have either even at exceeds than at or format more that. exceeds mm -hmm. than at. But then these guys, so the total might be the same. Mm -hmm. had or actually over 50% like of the kids but meeting But they see meeting way more into the at than into the yeah. 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 One of the things I'm even more Yes. 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 That's a really good If you take a look at... Um, our current eighth graders, overall at, right, they were seventh grade in 2018 on page So if we're stating the facts, you can then see we're stating on the note. Um, oh, on the note okay. We have you, so expectations, but so more students are meeting expectations, which also shows that fewer students um, are increased by three percentages, even though so we have a static amount of students that are right or percentage because right. in 2017 so, there were 58 percent and now we're up to 61%. What it says to me, so that particular person who is no longer in the education field that hasn't been for a long time, in the number of kids that we're not meeting the needs of a lot of children. That was 32 kids. A little bit. I mean, 30%. If you look at percent, I think 30% is a, is a huge number of youngsters who are below expectation. Yeah. And that's bothersome. Yes. I agree. I also am the type of person who wants to know why. Mm -hmm. And if you look at the other side of it. Behavior in a few years. Because I'm thinking about, like, uh, Why did you I always him? jump to yeah. the wanderings, right? And so, thing. like, the shift yeah. from learning yeah. to read to read to learn, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Yeah. But if you look at the well below, Children. is also higher at third through fifth grade. Yeah. yeah. It causes them well below, not and there's not a lot that are well. below. Uh, and, well, right? I mean, it's pretty well, it's comfortable. Comfortable, yeah. Test. In one, one day in time, but, or right. three days in time, Maybe out of 177 of their school year, is greater too. it could be any number of things. Yeah, it could be your school is very similar to the last school that I taught in. Although in oh, yeah. Portland, there are far more children living in poverty than there are at eight corners. And so there's other. Yeah. Her yeah. stories is yeah. how you yeah. can tell us our stories. So, but that impact, the data that comes out of your building, impact the data. So we're gonna write that down <laughs> over here. Um, so that like we can go one way or another. Right? Okay. Like, so that's really good. Yeah. Have, that's why, nice. like, like, when we do this, like, with our, well, our well, staff, well, it's hard because well, well, everybody wants to do that, right? Yeah. And, yeah. So, and so, like, this is the same process that we use when we do the grading. In the spring, with those three surveys, and, and as you can do break out everybody wants to check on this one. I wonder if. One of mine is that it is. Right. So, as an analyst, we're right. supposed to go to right. the other schools <laughs> right. in English. Okay. Okay. So, so, it is 49. The poverty piece like, is impacting our children. Not proficient. But then, like, how did this like, there was a significant, like, was a significant jump to the end? And that, that is where we're back down to 20. So, brother factor. I noticed for me is that by the time they get to the other grade, First, you have to just keep noticing some of things about the state. Right, okay. She's exceeding the state, which means the expectations here. You want to stay low and just.
by the upper grades, we have more to things that are so well, you know, the same things occur Sorry, not the direction the end, which is yeah. what we would be hoping for. Well, it does seem like it's not, but it's not a curve. It's not a it's I mean, not a zero. It's, 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 it's not a. It's not a straight line graph. Correct. Right. Right. So in those like, middle areas, yeah. well, because they don't have the data on your grade level this year, right? <laughs> so yeah. this yeah. is so the last. Wait, I'm you know, sorry, well, I was thinking this one. Yeah, we don't have it. What happened here? The highest number of those three grade threes was thirty. That are below proficiency. They were below proficiency. They the same. And then in grade 11, four, four, four was 29, four, 29 percent, and five was grade five. five. Right, so it goes. Now, I'm just giving you which seems to be an anomaly. Yeah. Yeah. Back up, back but that's back down. That's what David is mentioning, that right? his oh, grade, that was, that like he's a five, right. yeah. and that last year was like, up to like his grade level is not even on this chart. The true that every cohort, so we're just looking at the above expectations indicator. Let's just notice that. So grade three decline in the percentage. Twenty-four. Okay, so I did. Grade. And well, so the fewest kids are below grade. expectations. In the grade. There's plenty of students who you could probably find if they can I also noticed like we have relatively a low percentage of students who are all below it. So last year, the fewest students are below it. Like those are really small. Especially our current fifth grade, or our current sixth grade. I would say I think I'm jumping, but I would note that by the time they're taking the SAT, that is something that is very meaningful to them because it's something that goes into their college application. So I'm wondering, and I'm jumping, but I'm wondering might be if their attitude changes. Oh, right. So they don't know the math and they don't know the percentage. Well, there's so many. Yeah. So they're going, the yeah. right. but yeah. because these because are meaning meaning literally not. just got released now on Monday, what happens right. when they get Where released is districts have so a this is the actual to do fact checking yeah. to make okay. sure like the number of students that the, the state says we have yeah. matches that we do what our records have, and so there's that window of opportunity for districts to say we disagree that these numbers match up. We need you to go back and check. Once yeah, that window well, closes, well, three, five, then three, everything will be open to everyone. And so it's not there yet. So we do it right. if you're looking at things one more Right. State expectation is. Yeah, and the state is going to buy a dream. Right. The state's about to hurry up. Remember what their typical schedule is. Above state expectations at this time is a year. And that's a sad story. But you can also tell a really happy story and say the number of kids. Who are meeting the expectations has grown. The kids yeah. are working with right. statistics and lies, lies, mm -hmm. noticing on this And as it is, um, so it bumped up when they change schools. School. So this one, this test I want to the 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 whole path, like a negative transition. I don't wonder though. Yeah, but, <laughs> but well, but it's not but just it is it's grade. Grade. Yeah. the transition. Sixth grade, they go from 25 to 39, and it is a transition year. So, well, but third grade, the transition year to the I might be not going to I found one the lowest was They don't take it. They take something. They just do like children's progress and co and co so we're going to have to shoot. Okay, so we're going to wrap up the noticings and you get to move to wondering. Out of these five. Oh, wait, we didn't share out. We're going too fast. Could we have each group share out one of your noticings? Transition may have more kids. On the transition year, we have more kids than Christian pick below. And then, and then if you go in such a place, it's in the same building. She's really getting this. Go ahead. Just the case. I do. Is it my turn? Yep.
Go ahead, nice okay. math. Um, so we noticed that the percent of students that are meeting state expectations increased by 1% or more from testing through the year 2017 to 2018. We noticed that the transition year, grade three and grade six, the students that were below the proficiency line increased on that transition year. Then it went down when they stayed in the building in the next years. Or another way to say that is achievement increased when they stayed yes. in the building. Yes. Achievement increased as they stayed in the building or phase level. What, what kind of data are you looking at? Like, can they say that? Because we're all looking yeah. at different data, yeah. right? Yes. So that is important. Yes. Oh, so. oh, oh, we're looking at LA. LA. Okay, because yeah. we're not, right? We have different oh. ones. Yeah. Right. <laughs> oh, yeah. Makes a difference. Uh -huh. yeah. <laughs> oh, sorry. Uh, yeah, we uh, noticed that there were no SAT scores to analyze. In what? To just analyze over time in math. Fifty-eight percent of sixth grade students in 2016 were below or well below state expectations in mathematics. Now we'll move on to the wondering. So at this point, you are starting to make some inferences. You are framing the, your wonderings as questions that relate directly to your data that you're looking at. And then we'll look at this for about 10 minutes, and then we'll have each group share out one of their wonderings. I have two quick ones right off the bat. So I wonder, this is a question directly from my littles, how stamina so plays I into wonder. their achievement. That is what happened because these the are graduation long years and when they are tasks. And we don't, that's not how we teach. Yeah. Right. We don't expect yeah. kids to sit for 80 <laughs> minutes and really focus on 2017 and 2018 so is, that made the significant the jump always given in the same order. So I guess wondering what would have caused that. Can you just say that again? We wonder what happened for cohort year of graduation 2024 to this. And 2023. Stamina, and then this follow up, you're not typing for some reason, like you're typing somebody. Increase. Performing no, below expectations. Like, best secretary yeah. I've ever seen. Like, what the, second is, what is, is, the second for that is that the first third graders, particularly, so given that they the are the highest third number of below low expectations over the phase in grade five, uh, 27, it's their in grade first time. six. Like, it's an online test. Like, I wonder how they're navigating the tools and not accessing their lack of plays in. So in Absolutely. Because it's the, the first time they've interfaced. Again, not the content, the but like what the, they know so about the cool continuity of that stage. Were they the learning the laptop? Yeah. Like, all of that. Was there a Which lot of movements, the a lot of like, uh, kids in who and they haven't, moved like, away? Or was, you know, was one group more than the kids that are making more growth? They know. They just know what they get the answer. Like, how does that impact? Because, like, I know. Those are two you know, big ones again, for the younger guys. So I don't know that the impact is at the older yeah. guys. Yeah. Because just, well, I guess one of the obvious ones would be to wonder yeah. how the yeah. stuff yeah. at the state level. So but one of the years I want to test for example is right. Right. Like we, we, in theory, that blew that theory. It supports it for one for one group group and we don't have not the other. What in that? I wonder how Well, technically, that is a transition year. But our data actually diffused that because grade four and five shows that yes, that did go down. Because they didn't even actually 
it, and it was completely separate, and it was given at a different time, even. And so that goes back to my stamina question, like, who knows when the great one gets to... If it's a lunch, are you getting so incompatible with the food? The administration change, and then start saying, yeah, and then you get no, I mean, they do it. Obviously, they do a good job. I just wonder if it goes back to what it was their maternity if it were like smart cast. So they must have the right scores. All that stuff. And I went and I was in the geometry. It's a little bit of a question. How are you actually trying? Or not what is the motivation like? Just like looking at the numbers, it seems over time the percent of students below or well below increases. It's not much to do. I think they do it in Maybe the old fashioned way, like how we used to do it. I wouldn't be surprised. So we used to sign you know, for the computer. The computer right now. Always. 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 Mm -hmm. uh, the way the data is, the way that the material is assessed at the state level is inconsistent because you don't have it has value, right? Um, okay. The safe break class. And so why do they take them every year? It's never made for the state high school. And then so that's the next next year. Is the one year. Why are they taking these? That's like now. And then I think it used to be like only certain years to For some tests it is. Like for the original for the science only science is only fifth. She didn't understand that poll. I back to your piece. I wonder how motivation plays into this given the meaningful Yeah, so like the personal matters to them Right, right. So how does the personal connection and why we have a team play into off the wall question? Is it the same time? That's the middle school still looking at the day so like if I take the test together, I so we don't do it when and then it comes very short real world third quarter. They try so hard when the teachers this is not the and then they bring in and it is a part of the task that we do. So I think that in general, they're obviously doing that. They do that as much as the motivation to play a part, right? Like, similar to the task, but there are different tasks. And they align to the standards that each grade should break. So recently, I know I said there's been a huge controversy about the SAT. I mean, and I wonder, like, because they modified the SAT curriculum. When is the testing done? That it's in March. Advised people to read the SAT. And they just did a little bit of a couple of weeks ago. Because Never. the test was so much harder that yeah. kids scored so that they kind of lower than they have in third through fifth grade, but we yeah, don't have SAT was no. how the year mm -hmm. before the year. So that's a wonderful, so whatever. It's a whole nice system. Although, I don't really know if you can teach it to a test, but I mean, it'd be interesting it's to see what we're working with. Yeah. 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 We're very yeah. fortunate yeah. because our yeah. enrollment is relatively We've recently invested in it. We've got a lot of PD, so, you know, like, maybe the wonder is how much do we have a lot of regular access professional development and resources. We don't have a transition incoming. Yeah, we see a trend change like right school. at the time that we made a change yeah. in our curriculum. So it would be really cool if we were able to see like, oh, this is the year that we invested in units of study and we see this growth or this spike. But the test can be pretty guaranteed. Like, might make 20 kids see the same Do we do this test? That's good data. Same time for everybody every year. March ish, and we are April for that.
But for one, for a little while, for a couple of years, we did it in October. Yeah. That's remember? Yeah. Yeah. And then yeah. science, yeah. and then additional data. Science is always in, included. Yeah. What additional data so would be helpful? Like we wanted everything. Um, and we take the focus. And I look at the fifth graders in the year, right? Because we talked about that in terms of like bar for the applying the expertise. And then I like how the answer wouldn't be right. Right. Yeah. That's that's perfect. Very good. 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 Uh, right, it just right. It would just shift it to the, the same. Right. Yeah, She's going to be a superintendent someday. Oh, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's just it's not sitting in it. It's a free little girl. Science is ready. I wish we had science data in front of us. Brain work. Because the brain science data I mean, just continues to study. You love to analyze. I just keep you up we just keep doing better and better and better and better, but we have not. That's great. And they don't, they haven't changed the test because we can say, all right, this is they did way, way like in it. Well, first of all, there was so much data. It was fine arts and data, too. And I helped to look at it. And it's a little harder when it's set up this way. So, and the social studies. Was it like a humanity here? And there was the social studies portion. A couple of years ago. Where was the SAT test? Let me ask you a question. No, the MEA test. I know, but I'm saying that the SAT test has a section. The same for the thesis. Only in writing math is this test. What else do we consider? Yeah. Yeah. Um, what other? Like, we are all some of those schools. Well, some of those schools are the AP. We're not looking at state data. That's such a slice of measure. Right, exactly. Of our state performance on state testing data, we exceed the state expectations by 15, 20 percent for every grade. So, and I think that the state and we exceed expectations. So our teachers can be doing it right. Do we feel good about the 20 percent? No, no. Not us. First graders that meeting minimum. Well, that means like paper and pencil, old school you know, reading yeah. and writing. Yeah. And as I want to know. Yeah. But wow. it's, it's easy. It's kind of in and out. I'm sure you like, you know, well, well, all of day. And I know that each of these cohorts is about. Yeah. So you're probably right. Two hundred to two hundred and fifty kids. It's not a lot of kids. Like, you can put a name to every one of these digits, exactly. and that's. Some districts couldn't do that. You know what I mean? They're so big that they can't. And by the way, just we could give a bunch of schools wondering. And you know, we're lucky that we can. We're going to give you a minute to capture your last wondering, and then we'll start sharing out. Used to inform people. And there's always the question that I mean, not so much about the other literacy courses, but with math, you know, how amazing impacts as people on it. Like, if we have industrial ability, and there happens to be a test, there will be questions on it. Yeah. What would be the result? Time is time. And it makes a big difference. So, if we structure on that program, so this time, let's start with each group um, telling what data they're sharing their wondering on. <laughs> So we have um, ELA and literacy, and um, we were wondering what happened to cause cohort of the year of graduation 2024 and the year of graduation 2023 to have a large increase um, of students that are performing below the state expectations. Two. Um, we have the ELA data. And we are wondering if there was a way that we could get results in a more timely way. Could this impact how the results are used to inform our instruction? Group three. We were uh, mathematics, and we were wondering if there was, uh, if the time of year had anything to do with the outcome data. We also have math. And we wonder if the high achievement of third grade students in 2016 could be attributed to the continuity of curriculum instruction at K-5. 
Thank you. So I just want to make a connection to the next step of the improvement process, which is dig into student data. This data you looked at is very high level. We just started to take a look at it to form those questions. And that's one of the great things about this data is it gets us questioning things. So the next step is to then look at your question and say, which one do I really want to focus on now and, and try to figure this out. That is step four when you dig into the student data. You talk about what data do we need to collect in order to answer these questions. You go deeper into student work, observations. Um, you just don't rely on the um, MEA achievement data. You know, you also look at your benchmark tests. And I did want to just make clear that this data is not public yet. The public data will be released November 5th. And that's one of the reasons why this year you do not have any comparison data. Because right now it's private and we're not, the state um, results could change and we're not allowed to make that public. So November 5th, Monique and I will be getting right in there and putting together comparison data. And all of this will be posted in public. Thank you so much for taking this time to dive into the data with us and learn a little bit about this improvement process. I want to quickly make a couple of connections. We have under ESSA, if you recall, you probably heard of No Child Left Behind. That was reauthorized a couple years ago. And under ESSA, Every Student Succeeds Act, um, that significant shift provided more flexibility to the states as opposed to the federal government setting the goal for education, state set goals. What the state of Maine has decided to do was to allow districts to set their own goals. But they required an improvement process and for us to go through a comprehensive needs assessment. And that took place, we started that last year. Um, but that notion of setting a goal and then back to the ACE habits of mind, acting, assessing, and adjusting that process. We're doing that on a district-wide level, but also in terms of our student-centered learning system model, it's also the same thing that goes on within the classroom and as our mission states that we want to ensure that every student is empowered to become a resilient lifelong learner. It's important for students to learn how to act, assess, and adjust, whether it's their learning and their schoolwork or whether it's their behaviors for learning um, so that they can be those lifelong learners. And so whether it's district, school, classroom, um, individual, everyone can benefit from going through improvement process like this so that it is based on data. And those ACE habits of mind, that's one of the things we're trying to build as a culture within the district. Um, and so what I'd like to do is ask you folks at the table to complete the feedback for us. Um, we use that every year. And then I'd also like to entertain Kathy and I are happy to answer any questions that you might have for the next five or ten minutes or so. one of my like burning questions. I think it's certainly important to know that mm -hmm. because that changes changes the whole story. Mm -hmm.
tell you, she gets it if you want a student input. She is good. <laughs> She likes it. Is that not four? No,
So they rent in the winter. If you're here Sunday, you'll meet her. Wait, did you just do that? Just no. Do that. Mm -hmm. I don't know how much water I have. I'd like to call this meeting to order. Welcome to the Scarborough Board of Education meeting. Today is October 18th, 2018. Could I please have the attendance? Mrs. Durgan? Here. Ms. Casalonis? Here. Ms. Perry? Here. Ms. Starr? Here. Mr. Hinton? Here. Ms. Caldwell? Here. Agenda item 3.0, would you please um, join me in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Agenda item 4.0, um, are there any adjustments to the agenda? Um, there is one, the addition of 6.1.4 MSBA resolutions. Thank you. Uh, agenda item 5.0, public comment on agenda items. Is there any? I'd like to welcome anyone to make a comment. Um, please address your comments to the chair. State your name and address. And just a reminder, you have three minutes to speak on a topic from the agenda. Uh, thank you. Good evening, Ben Howard, 4 Oakdale Drive. Tonight, I would just like to thank the school board as a whole for your attendance at the recent public uh, Meet the Candidates Night. Over 70% of you, including student candidates, were in attendance. Um, believe me, it was noticed. Uh, I think it's very important. It shows that you are more than willing to listen to uh, the potential different viewpoints that the potential candidates have and that you are trying to uh, do your best to work with any potential candidates that do come on the board. So I'd like to thank you uh, for that. And that's all. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, Alicia Giftis to Saratoga Lane. I'd um, like to express my disappointment in the way that the agenda um, was written tonight in that um, 6.1.4 identifies the MSBA resolutions and which includes um, the PBE resolution or proficiency-based diploma resolution and knowing that that was such a concern for so many stakeholders in our town I was disappointed that it was not more specifically um, identified I, I would imagine that your intention would be to act on that tonight in order to um, inform the attendance at the um, delegate assembly. And knowing that, I think people have an interest in that and the intent of the um, agenda is to provide notice to the public. And so I was disappointed that that wasn't included. Um, again, I'll state my uh, opposition to the proficiency-based diploma um, and that the intent of the recent legislation <coughs> excuse me, is for that decision to be made on a local level. So this vote would um, really bounce that decision making back to the state level. And that's something that I oppose. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, Amy Glidden, 104 Ash Swamp Road. I, I too just want to speak on the, um, the resolution that you guys will be discussing related to PBE. I. Um, I, I also assume that um, based on the decisions the board makes tonight, um, the delegates next week will go and, and um, vote for all of these uh, resolutions. And I, I just want to um, say that the state was very clear that the, the districts themselves um, have maintained local control and it's no longer a mandate to do the proficiency-based diploma and that you get to decide as, as a locality um, what direction you're going to go in to prove that students are proficient. So I think it would be a step in the wrong direction. It would be a step backwards if you guys endorse that resolution next week at the, at the delegate convention. I think that um, um, Principal Netto at the middle school did amazing work um, this past fall, um, working with her teachers and getting their input and putting in place um, something that 
that um, is working, and um, I really applaud that work. And any decision to endorse the um, the state to take control back of proficiency and how that's done at the local level is is the wrong decision. And I really hope that you don't go that way. Thank you. Thank you. Um, seeing no further comments, I'll close close public comment. Uh, agenda item 6.0, new business, 6.1, appointments, and 6.1.1, high school freshman class advisor. Um, yes, the recommendation is to appoint Sarah Belton as the freshman class advisor to be funded through the general fund. So moved. Second. Any discussion? None. All those in favor? Four and two. Uh, agenda item 6.1.2, middle school athletic director. The recommendation is to appoint Jacob Brown as the Scarborough Middle School athletic director to be funded through the general fund. So moved. Do I have Second. A second. <laughs> uh, any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor? Four and two. Uh, 6.1.3, middle school co-curricular appointments. The recommendation would be to appoint the middle school co-curriculars as um, listed in the uh, attached document. The one thing I would like to point out for the board is that Tom Griffin is volunteering his time as the Builders Club advisor. Chris White is volunteering time as the Muses Pen advisor. And Doug Bennett is volunteering time as the advisor for Scarborough Strikes Out Cancer. The others are funded through the general fund. I'll thank them for their volunteer work. Uh, uh, can I have a motion? Move approval as printed. Second. Uh, any discussion? <clears throat> Excuse me, please. Uh, Tom Griffin uh, has been the builder, Builders Club advisor since we have had a Builders Club mm -hmm. at the middle school, and he will take no compensation for that. And the and, uh, Kiwanis Club has tried to give him an honorarium, and he won't accept it. And uh, so I think what we do is we give him a poinsettia at Christmas time <laughs> and uh, invite him to lunch when it's a vacation time. And he, he does so much more for our children. And he is just one example of the type of teachers we have in this school district. And I just wanted to point that out. Thank you. Well said, Jackie. Any other comments? Uh, all those in favor? Four and two. Um, next up is uh, 6.1.4, the MSB resolutions. Um, Jackie, could you speak to Yes. Uh, some of you may know that I am an elected member of the Maine School Boards Association representing uh, what is known as Region 7, which is Scarborough, Cape Elizabeth, Gorham, uh, Westbrook, Wyndham, South Portland, surrounding communities. I have served uh, for the last uh, eight years and uh, will be able to continue on for the next year because the convention, which is next week, is prior to the election of new school board members so I can continue on the board for another year. The resolutions uh, that have been presented and will be presented and voted on at the a delegate assembly, are brought forward to the executive committee of the Maine School Boards Association by a special committee that develops the resolutions. And uh, usually uh, there is not much controversy, but all school districts do not support all of the resolutions. Every school district is allowed a delegate to the assembly. The one that you have addressed this evening, the rationale on, on uh, the performance based, was developed, uh, I think, in part because Brian Langley, who is the chair of, of the Education Committee and is termed out uh, at the end of this session, uh, spoke with us uh, at our last meeting. And by the way, he's a Republican, and you know I'm a Democrat, so it has nothing to do with politics. 
but he thinks it's a travesty that the state has dropped all involvement with proficiency based. He understands what the problems are, but the Maine School Boards Association believes that this was a step backward for students who should be given the time and support needed to master one level of coursework before moving on to another. We're not saying that it should go back to being a state law, although the resolutions are the basis for the legislative agenda for the Maine School Boards Association. How that will be addressed at the legislative level has not yet been determined, but I can tell you this. Each and every one of you has a right to testify before the Education Committee on any item that is there. You don't have to be a member of school board. You don't have to be a member of Maine School Boards Association. You can be any citizen in the state of Maine who's registered to vote, I think you have to be registered to vote, can speak before the legislature. And I will tell you this because it's been told to me. It is very powerful when you when a citizen or a school board person speaks before a legislative committee, because we are the voters. They like to listen to the administrative side, and administrators certainly have more time to spend uh, testifying than to do the public, and do. And they advocate for what we need for our children. So. That is the rationale why this is on the agenda for the Maine School Boards Association Representative Assembly. Normally, we don't vote. It's been rare for us to vote uh, as a school board on the support of the resolutions because what happens is they've been printed for, what, two months now? And in the past, uh, any one of us who may have had a concern would simply tell the delegate, we don't like this. And there's never been any controversy. I said to Mary, we really should bring this to be voted on for two reasons. One, because the proficiency base is on there. And number two, because we have a school board who has not experienced this in the past. So they need to know that it's a protocol that may or may not be used. Sometimes it is, sometimes it isn't. It would be up to the chair and the person who's representing Scarborough, if they have a representative on the main school boards, uh, to make that decision. So that's why they're before you this evening. You've had time uh, to, to, to digest them. Uh, it is my recommendation that they be supported at, at the uh, delegate assembly, but it is up to the four of us to make that decision. So I move the adoption of the re resolutions to be voted in the affirmative at the Maine School Board's representative assembly next week. Do I have a second? Uh, second. Um, is there any discussion on that? Yeah, I have a question for, oh, sorry, I have a question for Jackie. Thank so, <clears throat> Jackie, is it an all or nothing? You have to support no. all the resolutions? No, no. Each resolution will be brought forward on its own. Okay, so can we do it that way? Can we, for, for our... We can do anything you wish. Okay, so I guess So my... what you would say if you want to vote on them individually, now you want yeah. to split the question. Okay, I move to split the question. She, she has moved to split the question. We had to vote on whether or not we... Oh, I'm sorry. Um, all those in favor of splitting the question? Four and two. Okay. So you want to take them one at a time? Yes, please. Um, so the first one is the CDS move to public schools. Which is about public uh, preschool. Do I have a motion? 
move to support? I mean, so we're supporting it as a board, right? Yep. Okay. So what would I move to support the first resolution? The CDS move, move to, to public, public schools, schools, section four, which supports three to five year olds in public schools. Right. The eventual move of three to five year olds into public schools, um, but only if it is well planned and appropriately funded by the state. Do I have a second? Second. second. Um, any discussion on that? All those in favor? Um, moving on to schools. Schools, that's four and two. Um, moving on to school safety. Um, to support a public school's responsibility to keep children safe, the Maine School Boards Association advocates the following comprehensive approach. I don't think I will go into all of it, but... Um, Move approval. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Uh, four and two. Um, moving on to... Gun-free schools. The Maine School Boards Association supports the current state ban on guns loaded or unloaded on school property and opposes any legislative attempts to amend that prohibition. So um, moved. Second. Any discussion? Um, all those in favor? Four and two. Uh, Proficiency-based diplomas. Um, the Maine School Boards Association supports the ongoing work towards the implementation of a proficiency-based diploma system in Maine schools. So moved. Second. Any discussion on that? I, I didn't say I have a question actually regarding that, Jack. Is your sense that what they are saying here is to make it a state mandate? Or because because I when I read it, I support, you know, teacher training, multiple pathways. You know, I support a lot of what is happening there. And I, I guess I'm not sure of what if it is because you you were saying earlier that you didn't feel like this was a state mandate, but to me it's more just defi defining what the, it is, but. What you see is what you get. Mm -hmm. the, don't try and read anything into it. Mm -hmm. The Maine School Boards Association supports this statement and its rationale. Uh, as I say, the, re mm -hmm. the resolutions become the basis for any, any legislation that the Maine School Boards may develop to bring to the legislature. Yeah. And... Uh, there has been no talk so far of, of proposed legislation from the Maine School Boards Association around proficiency based. I can't say it won't happen, but I am on the legislative committee. So uh, it would have to be, it would have to be something very mild and very student centered and something that all of us could support for me to support it. I, sorry. Yep. Um, so, like you said, Mary, there's a lot of um, sentences in this paragraph that I agree with. I mean, who doesn't want teacher training, multiple pathways to accommodate all learners, capacity to offer quality instruction? Yeah. Absolutely. Um, so. Um, for me, you know, there, there are some things that I can agree with in here, but just um, with the experiences that we've had in Scarborough, it's not something that I feel like our board should be in favor of at this time, um, because it's talking about the implementation of a proficiency-based diploma. Um, it's not talking necessarily about PBE or the grading and assessment. I mean, these are all things that we've discussed here mm -hmm. um, and that are important to us, but um, this is talking specifically about the proficiency-based diploma. Um, and given what we've experienced from our teachers and, and our community, I don't think it's, some, it's not something that I feel like fits with our, our district right now. Any other comments? I had more of a sense that the community was not so much against proficiency-based education, but the way that we graded it. Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't see how that implement, uh, impacts that, excuse me. Well, I think this isn't talking about proficiency-based education. It's specifically talking about proficiency-based diploma system. 
Um, I mean, sometimes I feel like we need to have, for everyone, we need to have some sort of like, uh, I don't know, we have to have a workshop on like PBE, PBL, PBD, standards-based, <laughs> what's assessment, what's grading, like, I mean, you know, it's almost like a different language, and we, and unfortunately, I do it too, we use all these terms interchangeably, and they're not, you know, they're not interchangeable, so PBE, to me, this specifically is talking about proficiency-based diploma, it's not talking okay. about the, the system by which we offer our kids instruction. So what you're, uh, so I just want to, so what you're saying is you, you like it aspects of proficiency-based education in what it's doing, but you're not sure about the diploma. Absolutely. That's right. yeah. 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 You know, and this, it does, in the rationale, it does talk about the diploma system, which, yeah. And I, I think that Hillary's making a really good point in that you can have a proficiency-based education system or a standards-based or mastery-based, those words are interchangeable without having a proficiency-based diploma. And so if you remember that two page, that one pager that I shared with all of you that has, you know, what does a proficiency based, what are the components of a proficiency based diploma versus a credit based diploma? Mm -hmm. Even here in Scarborough, as we worked to meet the letter of the law through our transitions toward a proficiency based diploma, we had a mix of the two because although we were utilizing and working toward a proficiency based diploma, our students were still earning credit. And so I think having that type of, or that level of autonomy at the local level to be able to make those decisions so that um, when we are grading and reporting, which is the communication piece of any educational system, that our families are able to make sense and know what their students know and what they're ready to learn. Um, and so you're 100% correct in saying that these are very distinct and different things and we can still have a standards-based, proficiency-based system without having a proficiency-based diploma. And I think, or and without having one through four grading. And you know, right. I mean, we're That's learning that now, right, because of what happened at the middle school. Right? I mean, we still use the proficiency-based and standards-based education model. We're grading it and we're assessing it differently. Right, it's more, about, it's more about the teaching and the learning being aligned to the standards is what we're talking about. We're talking about a proficiency-based system. Um, and no matter what marks we use to communicate with our students and our families about what their students know and can do, you, you could have a one to four system and not be proficiency based and you could have a one to four system and be proficiency based. You could have a zero to hundred and be proficiency based. You could have a zero to hundred and not be proficiency based. So those, those things are not necessarily synonymous mm -hmm. with each other. And so I think what I hear both you and Jackie saying is that we want to be able to continue to develop a student-centered system that works well for our families and our community. And if, if we're given the choice between a traditional diploma or a credit-based diploma and a proficiency-based diploma, um, I think you're right. Our community has spoke really clearly that they prefer a credit-based diploma. Mm -hmm. um, but we would, as we learn more from the state, those are conversations we need to have with our community. But right now, we don't even have specific rules as to what that means because the rulemaking hasn't occurred yet. Okay. Is there, well, thank you. Is there anything um, further, any further discussion regarding it? Uh, all those in favor of um, the proficiency, proficiency um, based diploma resolution. Um, all those against um, the proficiency based Four and two. Special Education Reform Section 4. Maine School Boards Association believes that special education system created by Congress more than 40 years ago needs to be reviewed and amended on the federal and state level to assure all student needs are being met. Do I have a motion? Well, I'm going to have a second. Oh, second. Um, any discussion? Um, so none, all the, all, sorry. Oh, sorry, go ahead. No, I'll just say that I think this is really important. I mean, some of the, some of the um, special education systems that we have now are just so antiquated, and I think it's important that we can do everything that we can to um, catch them up to where we are with the rest of our students. Sorry, catch up the system of <laughs> <Not> the students. <laughs> um, any other discussions? 
Seeing none, all those in favor? Four and two. Starting teacher pay in longer school year. The Maine School Boards Association supports a law change to lengthen the, lengthen the school year to 180 instructional days and 10 days for professional development because there is no longer enough time in the current calendar to accomplish all that is needed and required. In conjunction with the longer school year, we also support a law, ch law change calling for additional state funding to raise the starting teacher salary to $40,000. Our hope is that the salary will help attract and keep more teachers in the profession and make working in the rural parts of our state more economically viable. I'm opposed to this, and I said so at, at my meeting, and uh, the reason I am opposed to it is not the longer school year or the 10 days for, for, for professional development. But it's the forty thousand dollars salary piece. Did, did we have a motion, Jack? Oh yeah. No, I don't. Yeah, I don't think we had a motion. And we need a motion. All right. I so move. Second. Discussion. <laughs> the reason I'm opposed to the forty thousand dollars salary piece is this: I've negotiated contracts here for the last several years. And if you look at a teacher's per diem in Scarborough, $40,000 is not going to cover the extra 10 days that they would be required to work. And when I mentioned this at the meeting, there were some members on, on the main school board's uh, board of directors who said, well, they should be lucky to be getting $40,000. So that's why I'm opposed to it. I don't think we can impose that on our teachers and our staff. And I think if we're going to do it, let's put the money into it that is necessary to pay the teachers what they're currently earning, at least what they're currently earning. Mm -hmm. Jackie, can I ask a clarifying question? <clears throat> In the first paragraph, it says um, 10 additional professional development days. Yep. And then in the rationale, it speaks to five additional professional development days. Is that just a typo? I think it must be a typo because okay. uh, 10 was the number, and I will clarify that uh, in an email tomorrow, as a matter of fact. Actually, I think it's correct. It's, it, it's the, the original paragraph says 10 days for professional development. Right now we have five days. No, we don't. We have zero days. Right now, our students have 177 days, and our, our teachers, well, I guess, do we have five days? Yeah. But that's yeah. not statewide. I don't so think. then it no. says the rationale is five additional days, which would equal 10. Okay, so for me, I look at it, which says the majority of states in our country have 180 instructional school days, but the state of Maine requires 175. The 175 is referring to student days. Right. right. And so, that's where that five dollar five um, day difference is. Is that they want to increase it, the student um, day, calendar to right. one hundred and eighty. Right, but well, this but speaks says, specifically to professional says, development. The last and then sentence, on, Joanne. Uh, the five additional professional development days need to be addressed too. Because right now every district is different. Yes. Um, so okay. we have five professional development days right now, but some districts have seven. And so if you're saying right. ten additional days, is that 10 additional days beyond the 180 or is that 10 additional days beyond what you currently, so which each contract says. So is there a state minimum for, for so right now isn't the state minimum for instructional days 175? Yes. Right. Okay, and but is there a state minimum for professional development days? No. 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 Okay. But this, this states lengthen the school year to 180 instructional days Mm -hmm. and 10 days for professional development. Right. So that's 190 days, days for teachers. 190 days, correct. Okay. So, um, sorry, can I talk? Um, so, Jackie, I want to thank you because this was something that I was originally considering to be maybe a positive um, resolution. I don't... I didn't think that $40,000 would not cover 
the additional five days well, yeah. right now. And to me, you know, that that's important. Like, so yeah. 40,000 is not an appropriate minimum for, at least for our district. Last time I, I knew, it was something like $95,000 a day for teachers. And I think it's more than that now. Because, when, you know, at one time we negotiated five extra days here. And when we did that, it was so long ago, it was about $75,000 a day. But that was like... For the, for the district. For the district. For the district, right. yes. Right. For the right. district. So uh, we had to buy back two of those days to, for the budget several right. years ago. So in order to... You know, the state's going to have to pony up money if you think about five extra s student days. Well, what's our well, that's starting what, that's salary the, now? It's like pardon me? Our starting salary is what, 36? 34. 34. I think it's like it's 30, a bachelor's, almost 37. Yeah. yeah, so that's like $200. I can't day. remember what yeah. the per diem is, but $40,000 isn't going to cover it. I can tell you that right now. Okay. The resolution does call for additional state funding to raise it, but that's only raising it to 40. That's so only raising it to 40, yeah, yeah. so it's still not, even though it's, it is calling for more funding, but. Right, so, I mean, my first concern was, can we afford it in Scarborough to, to raise that, but it's, but that was kind of um, taken care of because it says that it, it would be state funding to raise the starting teacher salary, but I think Jackie's point is more important that we would actually be paying our teachers less if we were, if our starting salary went to forty thousand, but we required them to have one hundred and eighty school, um, one hundred ninety, right? So one hundred and eighty instructional days plus ten development days, we're actually paying them less than we are now. Well, we'd have to renegotiate the contract. There's no way that that the teachers are going to agree to that. Nor would we want them to, quite frankly. Oh, Is there any more discussion, or are we ready for a vote? Um, all those in favor of the motion for starting teacher pay in a longer school year? Uh, all those opposed to the motion? Four and two. I think our delegate could, uh, there's an opportunity to speak on each resolution. Yeah. And, and I think that our delegate could say that we're in favor of increasing the school year and increasing the teacher year. But forty thousand dollar minimum isn't going right. to cover it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think so because I don't. I mean, you know, it doesn't sound good for us to say we don't support increasing, you know, our starting teacher pay because I, I would support that. I just don't support this number. And I can't imagine other school districts. You know, we're not the highest teaching. If, paid, right. don't have the highest paid teachers in the state, so. Just a point of clarification, I believe it would be about $1,600 more, uh, so if the starting salary for teachers is, is roughly 37000 and you divided that by 182 days, you get the per diem rate, which is like $203, times the eight additional days, it would be like $1,676 more we would pay our teachers, would actually still be below the $40,000 threshold. I think the bigger concern for me would be where's that additional funding coming from? Because then as you work up the pay scale and you think about timesing that by 317 teachers that we have or so, um, that to me would be the biggest burden, would be not so much the 40,000, because I think that helps our profession across the board, but it's just that we already are in inadequately funded in the state, and this would put a massive burden on local taxpayers, mm -hmm. is what, what I see as the, the biggest argument. Well, I think Jackie's right, right? I mean, that would be an, an entirely new negotiation because it's not just starting teachers who are working the extra days. It's right. all the teachers. It would affect your everybody. Right. Yep. Okay, and there's one more resolution. One, one more resolution for school attendance at age five. The Maine School Boards Association understands how critically critical early education is to the success of students and believes Maine's current compulsory attendance age of seven is too high and out of state for the rest of the country. They support a recommended age of five um, and the compulsory attendance at age six and will advocate for a law change in the first session of the next legislature. 
do I have a motion? Motion. So moved. Do I have a second? Second. Are there any discussion? I'll just go out on the record that this one makes me a little bit nervous. Um, I know that so many people choose not to send their children at five for maturity reasons. I think making it a mandatory at five is going to put an undue burden on some of the kindergarten teachers. Many kids need that extra year to grow up and be able to sit through a classroom all day long. Um, you know, if you've got rooms right now, we're talking 20, 22 teacher, 20 to 22 students in a classroom. If you've got students who aren't ready to be there, I don't know how a teacher can do that if it's compulsory. I, this is one I'm really not sure I can support. Well, point of clarification, it, the, yeah. it's, it's just recommended at age five. It's so compulsory at age six. Yeah. Right. Any other uh, comments? I think that, I, I mean, I think that's a good point. You know, it's a parent's choice. I chose not to send my kids when, and they they were on the, they're now on the older side. Um, but I think that the recommended age of five is is acceptable, um, and, but and it gives you some leeway because the compulsory attendance isn't until six. Mm -hmm. Anything else? Um, uh, oh, good. I, I just would say, I, I want to look at the data on this, but I don't know of any students that we have whose parents are holding them till age seven. I don't think that I've. I've heard that, Joanne. Have you heard that? No, to be it's a, usually six. It's usually like the young fives or the, you know, the young, the, the fours that are going to turn five that parents choose to hold. And that was why I felt I read it as mandatory at five. And yeah, so that's <laughs> where I had seen that. But we understand a lot of kids, some kids are not ready at oh, that so. age. Yeah, my kids weren't. What's the hurry to grow up? <laughs> I wasn't, and I still sent him, and I, I apologize daily for that. So. <laughs> um, well, ready? Uh, all those in favor? Uh, four and two. Uh, moving on to 7.0, motion to go into executive session pursuant to 1 MRSA 4056A for discussions concerning a personnel issue not to return to public session. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Four and two. Agenda item 8.0, adjournment. So moved. Second. All those in favor? We are adjourned. Four and two. All right.